And they're all under their desks and they're scared. Terrifying moments when shots ring out inside a classroom at Mansfield's Timberview High School. He was in the classroom right next to the shooting. Panicked parents rushing to reunite with their children. It was very scary because my husband teaches there too. And I wasn't sure if they were going to come home. As multiple police agencies searched for hours for the suspect. There was a fight between a student and another individual in a class and a gun was used. This afternoon, we're told the 18-year-old is now in custody. And a good afternoon to you folks. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ken Molestina. And I'm Brooke Katz. Thank you for joining us for CBS 11 News at 4, streaming on CBS in Dallas, Fort Worth. I want to bring in our own Doug Dunbar. He is broadcasting live from Mansfield. And Doug, I, I mean, words, words can't describe it. It really yeah. was a terrifying day for so many people involved. It's Brooke, it's that day that most of us wander through life, and fortunately, we see it uh, happen occasionally elsewhere, but it's never us, right? Well, today it is us for uh, Mansfield ISD. I'm standing outside the Mansfield ISD Center for Performing Arts, and the reason is we're here, despite the fact that this unfolded at a school nearby, we'll get to that in a second, this is the reunification spot. Uh, it, it's large, it can accommodate a whole lot of people, and that's the immediate plan that they had uh, as far as action when it comes to reunification. So the line you see is the very back end of the very long line that's been a couple of hours now, nonstop, of parents who are reuniting inside that door off to the left, the main tower entrance. They go in, they're basically interviewed by police. Uh, they, they do their fact checking, driver's licenses, put two and two together to make sure we're matching up the right parent with the right child. And then they'll exit from the far left side of the building. And you see some people walking out here, presumably students with their parents who have now been given the all clear and they can go home. But uh, to the matter at hand earlier today, the injuries, I want to get right to that off the top. So many of you asking about them. It's a 15 year old boy and one adult staffer that we know as of this very moment moment uh, from Mansfield ISD High School that are in the hospital still as we speak. And they were just two of what were four victims when this all unfolded. It was a classroom shooting, as you well know by now. And, it, you know, when we look at the big picture, this thing put more than 2,000 students and employees and staffers all in danger today. To give you a, a better idea where it happened, Timberline High School, if you're not familiar with the area, uh, technically it's in Arlington, but it is part of Mansfield ISD. We've got team coverage for you today. We have a lot of questions that we have been endeavoring to answer for you this afternoon. Jason Allen's on us, uh, on this with us, Mansfield, where parents and students have been reuniting through the afternoon. Jack Fink is going to talk about reaction from state lawmakers. The governor has had a few things to say today on this. Steve Pickett, though, he is live for us at the high school where local and federal investigators are still on the scene as we speak. Steve, I'd like to begin coverage with you to find out where things stand as of 5 o'clock. Officially clearing this school is the word we received at this hour. The final touches of that from this incident. This school district, as you mentioned, Doug, dealing with the, the harsh reality, the fact that a teenager access, accessed a gun inside this particular campus here at Timberview. And police say this was not a random act. Even more concerning in some, in some regards, that 18-year-old Timothy Simpkins, he is in custody. He turned himself into Arlington police earlier this afternoon. He had a lawyer with him. It is this video that you see. Police have referenced that video as a classroom incident that apparently preceded this school shooting. It shows, according to a student and parent I spoke with, Tim Simpkins in that fight with another teenager. Police say at the moment a gun was then produced after that fight and Simpkins allegedly started shooting. That gunfire created that emergency lockdown situation inside Timberview. 1,700 students, staffers as well, all inside. Police from Arlington, Mansfield, Grand Prairie, all responding to this shooting. Police said they received information early on who they were looking for, but Timothy Simpkins had sped away, they say, from this campus after that gunfire. A 15-year-old student was the first shooting victim police listed. He is now in ICU listed still in critical condition. A 25-year-old male teacher also injured here, listed in good condition. A female student, her age not released at this point, apparently was grazed by a bullet, and another woman slightly injured on campus as well. Authorities are talking to Simpkins. They found a gun on the street in Grand Prairie, about two miles from where I'm standing, and officials believe the shooting itself is simply a byproduct of a fight between teenagers. What we believe happened preliminary is that there was a fight between a student 
and another individual in a class and a gun was used. When the police officers heard uh, over the radio uh, that there was a, uh, a teacher that was in distress, the police officers immediately went to that classroom. And I can tell you that one police officer heard the shots uh, as he was going up there. As you can imagine, this was terrorizing for so many. This lockdown circumstance and situation, children, frankly, were uh, hovering for cover, we're told, in some cases, uh, trying to escape this campus in some. There was this protocol of a process, and you saw it over the day, over the day where these buses were brought in and those students were removed from this campus. And it was the authorities, including the ATF, the FBI, and others, who cleared this scene once all of those 1,700 students were removed. They found no other trouble inside, we are told and Timothy Simpkins a we believe an 11th grader here at this high school 18 years of age now in custody on three charges of aggravated assault Doug Steve Pickett thank you so much in depth on what happened how it happened and where we might go from there meantime let's talk about the simple reality that all of us as parents you included the minute you hear this news today and that was me I got a 16 and an 18 year old your, your heart races dear God comes out of your mouth and uh, Jason Allen I want to bring you into the conversation you're a dad as well and even though we're not in this independent school district all students are our are, are kids right and you see this unfold on the news and all of a sudden you're that parent these parents rushing to the school here today some even I saw on social media parked on the side of the road because it was so backed up on a highway just trying to get here I cannot imagine the palpitations that parents had in that moment when they couldn't reach their kids Yeah, and nearly seven hours now uh, since this happened, Doug. We're still seeing some parents and some kids here who are just now walking out after all this. As you were talking about, we're about five, five miles or so away from where the shooting was, and parents had to wait as all this was all happening. They knew their kids were locked down for a while, and then they had to wait for their kids to be put on buses and driven over here to the Performing Arts Center where they could, they could meet up with them. And there were a lot of hugs, and there were some tears, and there was a lot of relief as parents found their kids today. Many of them had been communicating with them. They'd been sending texts. They'd been talking on video calls. So they knew they were okay. But in those initial moments of the shooting, not knowing what was happening, then that really still stuck with them until they could see their kids in person this afternoon. You know, it's hard to not know. It's, the, it's just the not knowing. Uh, you just want to know your kids are safe. And when nobody can tell you that, it's stressful. That's stressful. Today could have ended so much differently than what it did. When you wake up in the morning, you think that it's going to be one way. It ends up being a completely different way. You never know when it's going to be your last day. So I'm very thankful to have my daughter with me. Of course, there is that lack of information in those initial moments when everybody is wondering what's happening, right, Doug? But par parents today said that they were very thankful in those hours afterwards for the communication that they got from the district and from the police and the fire department, all the public safety agencies telling them where they could go, that their kids were okay, and they'd be able to meet up with them here. Yeah, you know, Jason, there's always a grading of how did we do after an event like this. And by all accounts, in this moment, it appears everything really went according to plan. Uh, thank you so much, Jason Allen. And Jason actually tweeted something earlier today, and I want to share it with you. I won't read the verbatim because you can read it right here on the screen. But basically, it's a text exchange between a mom and a son, and they shared this with Jason so we can share with you. Uh, the son was inside at the time, and you read it, and you can feel the panic just in those few words that you see, the urgency. And as a dad, you know, I, it, it comes across to me as almost a helpless feeling from a parent's perspective. Just one of the many, many moments that played out today. Uh, the suspect, 18-year-old Timothy Simpkins. What I can tell you regarding the home in which he lives, uh, Harris Ridge Drive in Arlington, we do know the police department, once they identified him, they've been there the majority of this day, and they are still there as of late this afternoon. So investigators are on scene. Just so you know, we've not heard anything from any family members related to him, to our knowledge at the moment. Uh, did speak, though, with a student who lives in the neighborhood not too far away also knows a teacher and the suspected shooter personally we want to get the latest on that Robbie Owens is joining us over at Arlington PD headquarters Robbie 
Doug, the suspect turned himself in to investigators here at police headquarters this afternoon, apparently without incident. And from the outside, things are just remarkably calm here. Nothing out of the ordinary happening, which is in itself somewhat remarkable, considering what this city has been through today. As Steve mentioned earlier, that 18-year-old suspect now facing several counts of aggravated assault with a gun. We know that suspect is a fellow student at Timberview, and earlier today, police shared that the shooting was not a random attack, but rather followed a fight between students earlier in the day that escalated to gunfire. There are, of course, many questions about who this young man is and how a classroom altercation could so get out of control. People claiming to be relatives have gone on social media to defend him, saying he was bullied. Now, as you mentioned, we spoke with a fellow Timberview student who told us that he really didn't know him all that well, but that he was quiet, kept to himself. That student had a lot more to say about the teacher that was injured today. He's really cool, outgoing. Um, a lot, like everyone loves him. Um, he's a uh, very nice, and he always he's he's always positive in his class. So a lot of good thoughts heading toward those that have been injured. You mentioned earlier that the family has not made a statement. At one point late this afternoon, the suspect's mother came out and uh, collected business cards from the media that was gathered but made no comment, suggesting that perhaps at some point the family of that 18-year-old suspect might have more to share about what they could add to how this could have happened. Live at Arlington Police Headquarters, I'm Robbie Owens. Doug, back to you. Robbie, thanks so much. You know, so many hurting families in this scenario, and, and the shooter's own family may be one of those families as well. So more to come on that. Governor Abbott, we know, has promised when public's today saying any state help necessary for local law enforcement, also for the school district, it will be there as needed. Our political reporter, uh, Jack Fink, is joining us to talk a little bit more. Uh, what else did the governor have to say today, Jack? Well, Doug, Governor Abbott said it was illegal for the 18-year-old student to have possessed and purchased a gun. The governor addressed the shooting midday, the start of his news conference with 10 other governors at the border in Mission, Texas. He, other lawmakers, and others are waiting to see how the suspect obtained the gun and how he was able to bring it into school. We grieve for everyone uh, who's been harmed or impacted by this in any way whatsoever. And uh, we, as a state working with the local communities, will do everything possible uh, to ensure uh, that the shooter uh, is swiftly and effectively prosecuted. Following the shooting at Santa Fe High School in South Texas that killed 10 people and injured 13 others more than three years ago, the state legislature passed a comprehensive law in an effort to prevent school shootings. School districts are now required to have emergency operation plans in place and to train not only school resource officers, but all school employees, such as teachers, even substitute teachers, on what to do during emergencies like the one today. And as Jason mentioned before, some parents are praising the district's communication today. We'll have more on that coming up at 5. Doug? All right, Jack Fink, thank you. Now